we won't have nutritious food, we won't have clean water or clean air or a stable climate if we don't have a healthy environment. This isn't about saving the planet or saving the environment, it's about saving ourselves. We're destroying the very systems that we need to stay alive. The truth is that nature has been sending out these warning flares for decades, saying that the system is changing, that, the, that ocean and air temperatures are warming and that this is changing circulation patterns in the atmosphere in the ocean and that this is throwing our weather out. Extreme fires, tornadoes, hurricanes in South Africa. We obviously saw Cape Town facing dire water shortages because of an unprecedented drought. And if we continue on the path that we are going on, very soon we will slip the climate into a state that is outside of anything that, that our current civilization has evolved in over thousands of years. About 15 years ago, I did a story on the mass die-offs of quiver trees, the beautiful um, tree aloe in Namibia. And what was really interesting about the story is that it was, it was a way to illustrate locally what is one of the big global stories around climate change. So around the world you have these pockets of vegetation and habitat. And in theory, um, natural scientists have been saying that if the world warms up as it is, those envelopes, those climatic envelopes that have sculpted specific environments, those will move towards the North Pole in the Northern Hemisphere and the South Pole in the Southern Hemisphere. And a really interesting example emerged in South Africa that demonstrated that precisely this kind of thing is happening here. So in the 1990s, um, farmers up in Namibia started reporting that these quiver trees, this beautiful tree aloe, they were, they were dying out all over the place and no one could understand why. So in 2001, um, a biologist by the name of Wendy Foden went off into the desert to try and explain what was happening to these quiver trees. And she went into the desert with a whole series of historic photographs of clusters of quiver trees from different places around the full range of the quiver trees climatic envelope. From the Brandberg Mountains in a few hours drive north of Vintuk and right down to Nivotville, which is about four hours north of Cape Town. She tried to track down the precise points where those photographs had taken and then she would retake the photograph and then she would compare the two. And what she found was that in the very north of the range of the quiver tree, there were entire graveyards of trees. And because the desert environment is dry and harsh, as trees died, they would just lie there. So it would be a really good record um, of the number of trees that had died. She went down to the Richtersfeld, which is um, the border between South Africa and Namibia, and she found that there was about a 60 to 70% die off of trees. Very few young trees, no seedlings. And then she went down to Nivetville area and found that the trees were actually still looking good, quite healthy. And the, the conclusion from that research was that the trees were dying in the north because it was getting too hot, but they were still surviving in the south. An indication that the envelope that they live in was shifting south, that this desert was pressing south towards Cape Town. In parallel to Wendy Foden's research of the quiver tree, um, climate modelers in South Africa decided to take the vegetation map of South Africa and overlay onto that map what would happen if temperatures rose around the country. The vegetation map in South Africa is a very useful proxy for the climate map. You can see from the map that we have a number of specific vegetation areas and think of this as a, a climatic envelope that has allowed the natural environment to sculpt the very specific species that live in that space. So they put that map into one of their models and said, what happens if we increase the temperature, knowing that species are, or these climatic envelopes are likely to move towards the South Pole and the Southern Hemisphere. So the second map shows you how by 2050, these climatic um, envelopes will have shifted or changed. Scientists don't know what species will be able to live in those environments. We are in more than just an environmental crisis. This is a crisis that is going to shake our economy, our politics and our communities. I think we've been underplaying the extent of the emergency for too long. I think we do need to uh, turn up the volume in terms of using language that reminds us that this really is um, an unprecedented emergency.